It's another Jeep thing. That's right. We've got a, uh, I think it's a 2004 Jeep Grand Cherokee Laredo package. Customer states, uh, vehicle makes noises, check brakes. Uh, they know they've got some issues. So we're gonna get this thing up in the air and give it an inspection. I, I don't know if we're uh, gonna do any repairs on this thing today at 130,189 miles on the odometer. Yeah, I'm not so certain what we're gonna get to today. This thing's actually looking kind of rough. So uh, let's go ahead and get started with uh, our inspection here. And we're gonna have to determine some kind of a path, uh, if any, on this uh, particular Jeep. It, it, looks, it looks okay. But when you start getting in close, you start to see things that, well, they're just not quite right. For example, we've got some kind of, a, I don't know, like steel bailing wire holding the grill on. See that right there? There's a, another addition of it over here. Blue towel. Interesting little PCV assembly right here. It's got little, some like screws or whatever in it and a, the ever classic electrical tape on the PCV system. K and N intake for extra horsepowers. That's pretty good. Let's see. Yeah, I think we're just gonna do like the top-down inspection on this thing. Um, that's a that's a new angle for our dangle there. Typical Jeep things. We've got wires just kind of hanging out, running around. What is that? Intake temperature sensor connector. I think. Is that what that is? Yeah, it looks like we're we're butt connected right into that. Where do these wires go? They're running up into, into that little mess right there. We've got some wire nuts. Hmm. 120 volts maybe? I don't know. How many splices does it take to wire up a sensor? Where's the rest of this go? I wonder if rats got in here and ate this. Okay. So we've got a couple electrical defects. We've got an emissions defect. We've got some body defects. We've got some battery system defects. Let's see here. That's not looking that great. Got another power wire going somewhere. No, 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 no. I don't even know where that goes. One going down. Ah, there's one going down to the starter. So it looks like our starter motor has been jumpered with this red power wire here. Which tells me that... I disconnected this. Tells me that this wire going to the dash is probably dead meaning there's something failed in the dash oh dang look now let's get in closer for our close-up we've got our first drywall screw check it out drywall screw running into the starter right here you guys see that dave did you see this yeah the one in the starter yeah that's fantastic it's got a new starter on it though oh what would you say it's got a push button in it push button start i see let's go find it so the ignition's broken that's what i thought Where's our push button at? Oh, there it is. There's our starter right there. Cute. Okay. It's updated. It's updated. Yeah, that's the uh, that's a modern twist on it. Okay. Well, customer states brakes. So we're gonna go ahead and run this thing up in the air and pull the wheels. Take a look at our brakes next, and uh, and see what else we have to do. So I think this video is just gonna be for like documentation purposes what we need to do is, is give this thing a holistic evaluation and find everything wrong with it then we'll go from there moving on up to our non subscribe button I don't have a sticker for this side so there is no subscribe button on this side now that doesn't mean unsubscribe that just means I didn't have my clever little reminder button let me show you guys that one that one right there yep I don't have that one over here so we're just gonna use that one in lieu of this one Looks like my coffee's kicking in. Moving on up. Dave's snickering at me again. He's like, I've made mistakes in life. Or he's an idiot. <laughs> nah, no, nah, we just, I'm having fun. All right, chest height is good. Let's set around the locks. We're gonna grab some guns and pull these wheels off real quick. What are we looking like? 21s? Sure. Well, they're either 21 or 19, and I left my 21 out here because we were working on a trailer. Let's see if that's gonna fit. Nope, those are 19s. Yeah, they're 19s. So we don't know if they're all 21 or 19, so I'm, I'm bringing a flip socket. That one has both. You can flip it around, 21 on one side, 19 on the other side. Bust off the impact here. Coming in, impact gun cam, unclickages.
seriously? What is problem? I'll turn my gun up some. Let's try this one. I think I'm out of battery. Who knew? No, no, it says I got three bars. Maybe the gun was... It's not happy in the cold. That's what it is. Seriously? Come on. You know what? I bet I'm losing torque with this extension. Let's try a non-extendo socket here. It's Dave's socket. How about now? Yeah, look at that. Okay, wheel. Let's see what's in here. We got some crustomatic. Nothing crazy though. What is this? Rub marks from the tires on the shock absorber? Hmm, check brakes, they say. Okay, well, the rears are... Yeah, we're paper thin. You see that little gap right there between the rotor and the pad? It's a paper thin gap. Oh, uh, let's check. Uh, let's check this other side here. How's the shock doing? Yeah, whoa, look at that. Tire is rubbing a hole right through the shock absorber. That's not bueno. And uh, yeah, check brakes, copy that. Okay, so we don't have any brakes. We've got a rotor. Wow, look at that lip. We have a rotor that's been ground super thin. The pad is gone, seems to have fallen out of it. And this caliper is just kind of hanging out there all flippy floppy. It looks like we have pinched off the hose with some vice grips and then zip tied the vice grips together so they can't come off. That's to disable this caliper back here because there are no pads in it. So looks like we're into this corner for pads and rotors. Mm, we've got aftermarket wheels on there, or well not aftermarket, but those don't go to this. I think that's a newer body style, which tells me that the offset is not correct, which is why the tire is rubbing a hole through the shock absorber. Okay. Oh, what else? This is one of those situations where the more you look, the more you're gonna find. So that's a, that's no good. Let's check the, uh, the fronts out. See what we're looking like here. We have, Decent looking pad thicknesses. Can you guys see that? Well, that rotor's pretty rustomatic, and we've got got some groovy action going on here. That's not good. Okay, so we need some pads. The rotors could use some love as well. And we've got the loop-de-loop -loop fluid mod. Look at that. This caliper has been twisted. Last time it was off, the hose was twisted, and they put it on with that twist. So now we're getting this pinching situation going on here with that hydraulic hose. That's not good. Let's check the other side. That one, that one seems to have some kind of a twist in it, but it doesn't do the full loop like the other side did, but I don't really care for it. Tire has been rubbing on this shock absorber as well. What is this? Ha, it's a lift kit. Look at that, it's the AutoZone Redneck lift kit. You stick these little spacer things in there and they jack the spring and it spreads the spring for some ride height. So we're lifted on the right front. That's cute. And we're not lifted on the left front. Why? I think the insulator is missing on this side over here. Look. Yeah, maybe, maybe not. No. Why? Well, maybe the spring is just junk and it needs a set of springs. Yeah, that's kinda, it's weird why we're doing that. How about this side here? Hmm, okay. Nice bushings. Those are for the sway bar. Sway bar in links, those bushings are falling out of it. Oh, what else do we have? Let's see here. Well, it looks like, <laughs> look here. The uh, steering damper has been deleted. It's supposed to bolt onto the axle here. And then that's the bottom side of it. We're not getting much dampening out of that. I wonder if that made noise. Um, I'm gonna go out on a, on a guess here and I'm gonna bet that these tie rods are worn out. Got some oil leaking. Motor mounts collapsed. That one's collapsing, okay. Yeah, let's grab uh, some pliers real quick. I'm going to compress these uh, fallen socket joints on our tie rod and see if those guys are any good. 
Yeah, it looks like we're doing the, the full-on walkthrough on this thing. I'd be uh, I'd be cautious to begin repairing without full documentation of all the affected uh, systems here that could use some TLC. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to take uh, take these big channel locks, and we're looking for some play. You guys see that? See that motion right there? Yeah, that one's worn out. Let's check this one over here. Are we worn? Are we not worn? What are we doing? Oh yeah, that one's bad. That one's super duper bad. Look at that. Junk. That one's the same. Oh, let's see, what else do we have? We've got one, there's a joint up here. Check this unit. Yep, again, the same. There's a bushing sticking out right here. See that? Yep. So we need the we need to do some rebuild action on this oil leak. So this bar has got to go. That in link's got to go. That in link. This one. This one. We need an alignment after that. The steering damper should be replaced. I wonder if this thing has death wobble. <laughs> Got death something. It's near death. It's, this truck is a near death experience. That's what's going on here. Okay, let's run her up in the air some more and uh, take a better look from the underneath carriage. See what else is going on. I kind of don't know where to start. Well, I'm thinking that I should probably be starting with the brakes because nothing else matters unless it stops looks like the tire has been rubbing a hole through the fender inner fender liner yeah those tires and wheel combinations are not uh, not supposed to be for this truck we rubbed a hole through this one as well see all that I can see you not okay all right <laughs> oh this is bad the more we look the more we find Yep, there's that busted collapsed motor mount again. Look at that thing. That's destroyed. Way up top here. See the rubber squeezing out? The thing's totally collapsed. She junk. Oil leak higher up. See that bolt right there? That's coming from, looks like the back of the valve cover. That's our starting point with the oil leaks. Hmm, how's this bushing here? Is that one any good? That one's stabilizing the axle. I think that one's okay. No, no, no. Moving along. Slight transmission pan. No, no. That's from the oil. Okay. How's our transmission mount? That looks okay. Slight tail shaft leak. Nothing huge. That bushing is torn. That's the rear control arm. Let me get some light in there. You guys see that right there? Right at the bottom? There's a tear on that bushing. And a similar tear on this other bushing right here. Okay. How about these ones up front? That looks okay. So rear control arms have blown up bushings. There's an axle seal leaking back here as well. Hmm. Definitely doing some Jeep things with this Jeep. Oh, here we go. Look, there's a spring isolator that it's, it's just gone. There should be like a, a rubber business in there and it's this thing burned down or something. Look at that. It looks like it's burnt. What if this thing like caught on fire once upon a time? That's that's weird. Well, the axle's not leaking. That's good. Okay. Well, there's no rust. I guess that's a bonus. So basically what we need to do is catch up on uh, 20 years of maintenance and do some massive safety repairs on this unit. Definitely brakes. Um, looks like pads rotors in the rear. Got to put a hose on it, bare minimum. Um, do, 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 do. I need to flip that caliper in the left front, bare minimum, and I'd like to do, I mean, those rotors weren't that great. They're super groovy. The pads are okay. It's got a decent amount of pad, but these rotors are, uh, that's just not up to par right there. Look at that. 
Yeah, too many grooves. It's had too many pad slap brake jobs in its lifetime and some body work. Okay, so plan of action, safety first. Let's do the safety stuff, which is gonna be the brakes. So I'm gonna write this up for brakes. Um, on top of that, we're gonna request that we do the front end stuff. And I don't really know what to do after that. Uh, mostly brakes though. I think all this can be undone. Um, it's not too far gone, except for the drywall screws and things like that. But I, I think we can fix this thing up some but that's a matter for our customer to, to decide. So I'm gonna go build this estimate real quick and we're gonna bounce this off of them and see what we're gonna do. Stay tuned, don't go anywhere. I'll be right back. We've got ourselves a uh, Ford Exploder here. It's a newer model, customer states, uh, vehicle's making some kind of grinding, squealing noise while the engine's running. It was dropped off on a tow truck a couple days ago. Let's climb on in this unit and uh, acclimate ourselves to the new environment here. Let's see, key on. Powering on, let's see what we've got here. It looks like 126,378 miles on the odometer. Starting the engine. Oh yeah. Yeah, she's making some noise. Okay, in Espanol. Alrighty. Dang, it sounds like something's destroyed in there. Hold on a second. Wait, 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 wait. Powering down, we're not gonna drive this yet. Hang on, hang on here. Something's very, very, very wrong on this thing. I don't even want to pull it out of the parking space. Pop things, you hood. Let's see what the treasures lie beneath. I may have to give this a restart to identify the issue here. Dang, what do we got going on here? Is that a 3.5? 3.5 liters? Uh, survey says on the sticker, 3.5 liter V6. Okie dokes. Prop rod coming in, engaging service mode. There we go. So, let's see, I can't see. Yeah, let's go ahead and restart this thing. See what's making all that, all that ruckus and commotion down there. Reaching around here. Oh, I can't get the key. Reaching through, there we go. Okay, nothing's flying apart on it. I guess I can drive it. Does not sound very happy. Not at all. Backing up the auto. Let's get this thing into the stall and shut down with a quickness. Oh, it kind of slowed down some, the noise. It stopped. It'll stop being so horrendous. It's quite horrendous. It sounded worse than the fellows next door over there cutting up uh, countertops massive grinding action hmm, there's a forklift behind me kind of a crowded parking lot today okay we'll swing this thing on in we'll nose it into the middle stall there we got a sierra on the big stall or the little stall in the end the big truck on the flat stall another big truck on the on the big stall over there and we'll nose this little guy in right here in the middle there we go Parking the auto, re-powering down. I probably shouldn't have done that because I still need to see what's going on in there and I couldn't see much in the parking lot. Tell you what, let's fire up some illumination here so we can see what we're trying to see. And then we'll see what there is to see. Lightsaber engaged. Hook you on over there. And it's gonna slide off the front of the hood. We'll try it again. There we go. It's padded for paint protection. All right, looking down on the front of the engine, I don't see any destruction going on in there. Can't really see much. We've got an alternator pulley, a uh, tensioner, crank pulleys down there. I'll tell you what, I'm gonna loosen that belt right there and we're gonna wiggle. There's only, yeah, we're gonna wiggle these accessory drives. There's only an alternator and uh, looks like an AC compressor. So it's either gonna be one of these accessories on the outside or it's gonna be something internal. The size uh, wrench is that guy, three eighths. You see a little tab right there on the tensioner, see that? I think that's a three eighths. Okay, let's get a wrench. I see we use the big wrench for maximum leverages. Okay, yeah. wrench coming in. I'm not sure which direction we need to turn this tensioner to get it to untension. So we've got like a 50-50 chance. It's either gonna be 
lefty loosey or lefty tidy it looks like it's lefty tidy so let's go back the other way what i'm going to do is just slip this belt off of the alternator pulley and then we'll go back inside and, and restart it what that's going to do is disconnect the accessory drive all together and with that drive disconnected it'll disable the nader and the ac compressor and with those guys disabled if the noise is gone then we know it's in the accessory drive sorry for my hand in the way here i'm trying to I'm trying to ah snipped i almost got my finger pinched i had it right down there by that pulley almost had it too Hmm. This is hard to hard to reach in there. It's gonna be fun to put this belt back on. All right, I got it. It's coming off. See right there. Okay. So the belt's loose. Let's give that nader a spin. Oh, hang on, hang on. I feel it right there. It's I think it's the nature, the altor nator. Let me get in with some illuminations here. Let's see what we can see. Look at that pulley right there. It's very tough to turn. You guys see that? See that flopping action in that, that alternator pulley? Look at that. Watch this. Closer, Mr. DeVille. Found the problem. It has a dead nature. That alternator's smoked. That's the grinding noise. Hey, Lauren, yeah. can you hop in this, uh, this truck right here and start the engine for us? I wanna see if the noise is gone or if it's, uh, if it's coming back. Beginning engine restarting sequence. Go ahead. And no noise. Yepper, confirm kill, that's a diag. Hey, go ahead and shut her down, please. Okay, let me go, let me go inside and uh, I'll see if I can't find a replacement unit for this and we'll get started. Looks kind of fun. Things sort of buried down there, but okay. Yeah, let me go source one and uh, we'll see what we're gonna do here. Okie dokes, I'm in the system here. I'm in my parts catalog. We're gonna look up Alter, how you spell that? Nator. Did I get it right? It's because you guys are looking. Okay, um, Ultima, that's a bottom of the barrel blur, uh, brand. That's a negative. So we're, we're gonna go with a Motocraft. Yeah, there's a new Motocraft. Dang, that one's 500 bucks. That one's 325, it's for Motocrafts. Let's see what they got here, 200 amp HD. Laura, will you go check and see if that has a heated steering wheel? Yes. I need to know which amperage we need, we require. Let's see, this one's 363, that one's 292, that one's 493 bucks for the 220 amp. And so without heated seats or without heated steering wheel, we know we have a 175 amp. So if it has heated steering wheel, that means we gotta go with, I think the 200 amp or maybe even the 220. Uh, Vision OE, that's a remanufactured brand. I've never used those. Has anyone used a, a Vision OE Naders before? I've never encountered them. Let's see what Advanced Auto Parts has. Hmm, CarQuest, 346 for that one. It's pretty generic. It's, uh, that's a reman, but through CarQuest's people. That one's 355, 299. These guys are expensive. Uh, the Motorcraft, this one, 473. That one's 569. It does not have heated. Uh, Is there I any buttons on I the dash? I see any buttons. Okay. So we can go, we can go with the 175 then. It's still kind of pricey. Okay, add to cart. So now we go into labor guide. This is how we come up with our labor times. Like this is pretty standard. So the, my POS system has, and that's point of sale system. It has a built-in labor guide similar to auto, all data. Alternator, turbocharged, no. That's funny, look, naturally aspirated, says so up here, but then the labor guide is for a turbocharged alternator. 
what's that say, two hours? Okay, we're gonna check all data also, just to see, we'll go ahead and get into there. A VIN, and we'll plug the VIN in. Where's my VIN? Paste the VIN, pulling us up, exploder, and we want parts and labor guy. There we go, alternator. Or I should click on it. So whenever I find a uh, something that doesn't seem accurate, I will double check the labor guide. Why can't I spell alternator? Here, autocorrect, spell it for me. So what I'll do is, since it said turbocharged, and that's an NA vehicle, I'll check the labor guide on another, another guide. This one says 1.6. Okay, so since that first labor guide did not give me an option for non-turbocharged, what I'll do is I'll conduct an average. So we got two hours plus 1.6 hours, 3.6 hours divided by two. So 1.8, that seems to be a fair billable amount. Let's go take a look at the vehicle and see if the 1.8 average seems to be acceptable. Silverado, here for maintenance. All right, so taking a gander inside of our unit here, our uh, minimum is 1.6, our maximum is two hours. And so what we're looking like probably gonna have to discharge the AC because there's that hose in the way. See this, uh, this AC line? It runs down and across the front of the nader uh, onto the uh, AC compressor. I might be able to sneak it out through there, but I believe no matter what I do, I'm gonna have to pull these fans out to get the thing to come out of there uh, real quick. Gotta fix what's wrong in the world. There we go. Be the change that you wish to see. So that thing does not come out through the top because there's a cylinder head in the way. It can't come out through this hole, so it's either gonna come out through the bottom, which means I've gotta contend with that cross member down there. It runs all the way across, or I have to pull the AC compressor off and drop it out through that hole. So yeah, I'm, I'm gonna go with 1.8 on this one. 1.6 one seems really light and it's not turbocharged, so I can't do the two hours. Lauren, does that sound fair to you, darling? What? Good. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna take that and make it 1.8 hours, enter, good to go. Okay, does that seem fair, 1.8? At my rate, 135, total of $242 to replace this unit, okay? So dang, 242 bucks, 352 bucks for the part. It's got a core charge and grand total of $620.31. Dang, that's an expensive alternator. Now, to me, that seems kind of like a lot because I come from a time where alternators were 100 bucks and I kind of feel bad. So what I'm gonna do here, help my, help my guy out, we're gonna delete the shop supply fee. We don't need, I'm not gonna charge shop supplies. I'm not going to use shop supplies. So I really shouldn't do that but this doesn't feel right overall. I'm gonna, I'll cut the labor back a little bit. And our new grand total is, yeah, 215 bucks on the labor side and total 593. Yeah, that's, that's best I can do with a quality component. I can put in one of those cheapo alternators. I'll tell you what, let's price it real quick with a cheapo. Alternator, we'll go back in and I'll put one of those, uh, cheap units in. Let's find the lowest price when we can. Uh, Auto Zone. They have one for $218. We'll go with that one. And that's a 200 amp. That's a reman, not a new one. Phone's ringing. So I'll submit that quote. Okay, that's going in. New total, 449.37 with, with the cheapo unit right there. So that's the that's bottom of the Hello? barrel price I could possibly get. I'd prefer to use the Motocraft, but Hi, if it's a you? price point thing, we can go with that one right there. My dear, will you call the FERD people and uh, give them the option for the Motocraft Nader uh, and that cheapo? And I really don't want to put in the cheapo because they burn up. I'd yeah. rather put the Ford part in, please. You give them a ring. Thank sure you. Can. I'm going to go back to work. Thank you. Yeah. Okie dokes. So we need to get everything moved out of the way here. And Jis? Um, I just got off the phone. They said, they said they're going to pass. Really? Yeah. You know what? Yeah. Really? I, yeah. Yeah. No sale? No, not today. Hmm. They're going to come pick it up in a little bit. All right. Okay. All right. Well, thank you, darling. You're welcome. Wah, wah, wah. <laughs>
declined. Okay, well, in that case, I guess I'm putting this belt back together and, and that's that. So, that is, that is done. Man, that's gonna, it's gonna mess up my, uh, my matrix, my numbers in my computerizer. I don't have a, I don't have a boatload of declines. Oh, well, at least that legitimizes the paperwork, I suppose. Here, we'll put, uh, slip that belt back on. I think we're good. No, it's not on on the bottom. Laura? Yes. Come here real quick. Can you put your hands right here and hold on to that? Uh, you gotta pull back some. Yep, don't let it go that way. I gotta put the belt back on down below, okay? Yep. So don't let it move, right? Yeah, don't, don't smash my fingers. Okay, got it. Uh, you may slowly release. Please release, release, release. Good. Okay, let me check the crank pulley real quick. It's kind of dark down there. Uh, crank looks good for my eyeballs. I think we're good here. My dearest, would you uh, hop back in this unit and restart the engine so we can confirm the horrendous noise? Guess we're backing it out. All done. No sale. We good? Hood prop down. Brrr, that makes a funny noise. Good to go. Will you go ahead and back it out? Park it. Honk the horn for safety. Thank you. All right, guys. Well, I guess that's uh, going to be that on this particular uh, project over here. So, uh, I guess I'm going to go outside and fetch something else to do. I'm going to close this video out right now. Thank you guys for watching the short diag video. It's a confirmed kill. We found the issue. Man, that's bad. Brr, I wonder if they're going to drive away like that. I guess we'll see. All right, guys. We'll see you guys later. Thanks for watching. In a video, in a transmission, in a Ford alternator.